Hi everyone, I'm Myla, I'm a type 1 diabetic, and today's video I'm going to talk about different things that have happened this week that have been stressful. Um, the one that I'm going to talk about the most though is of course related to diabetes. Is just going to be me talking about the anxiety that I've had this week and because some of it has to do with diabetes and I uh, feel like you should talk about the good parts of being good parts of being chronically ill, like the good days, but you should also talk about the bad days. Um, because sometimes the bad days really, really suck. And this time, the the bad days were day after day for an entire week. Uh, and not just about diabetes, but like in general, bad days were like day after day. And um, that gets really frustrating. Um, so, let's get into the video. So this week has been rough. I'm gonna pull up a list of all the things that happened this past week. I also swapped my schedule around um, and I was really concerned because I had to drop my class that was in person, which was the one that makes it so that I can stay on campus this term because of how my university is doing things. Um, I had to drop that and then add in a different class, but I wasn't sure if this class would count because it's a PE class. I'm taking a yoga class. Um, and it is in person, but for some reason I was like, I don't know if this will count or not because it's just a PE class, it's not like a class class. So I emailed the dean. He hasn't e emailed me back yet, and I emailed him um, over a week ago <laughs> asking if I could do this. But I swapped my schedule around, and it, it's fine. Like, I'm happy with my schedule now. But I was really nervous that I would have to, like, pack up and move out. <laughs> Um, which is not a fun feeling to have for your second semester of your senior year. That's not fun. Especially when you have a job that keeps you on campus. So the thought of, um, well, I might have to like step down from my job and go back home because of my class schedule. That's not fun. Um, and that was incorrect, I should say. Um, I was, I'm on campus, like clearly you can tell by what's behind me. I'm still on campus and uh, I'm still able to do my job but it was very frightening for those few days where I was like, I think I'm gonna get kicked off campus. Um, and that's mostly because I am very anxious already, but um, yeah, so <laughs> that happened. Then I had to speak, so I don't like public speaking. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this is so hopefully I can get better at it. Um, but I had to speak in front of a group of alumna from my school as well as some other students um, about what I did over January <laughs> um, and over January I had a really really cool internship that an alum sponsored which was awesome and I appreciate it a lot but I don't like speaking in front of people so I spoke to the alums and they were super positive which was great but also very overwhelming and then later in the week I got an email with a couple quotes from me that my school is going to put out, which is exciting. I'm excited to be in an article for the school, um, but it's a little stressful. <laughs> so then on school, or at school, one of my apartment mates and I went out to go get groceries. Um, and this is the day after I spoke to the alums. And when we get back, we see a police presence on the campus. Um, and they're putting up crime scene, do not cross tape, or police line, do not cross, one of the two. I couldn't really read it um, as we were in a car moving past them. Everything is fine, <laughs> um, don't worry about it, but that in and, it, in and of itself was stressful. Um, later the school sent out emails assuring everyone that everything is fine, don't worry about it. They just like discovered something on campus that they had to like look into. Then we were supposed to get four inches of snow and then ice on top of that and we could have lost power uh, and there are lots of emails being sent out saying hey this might happen here's what you do in case it does um, we didn't lose power but I'm sure you will well, you might be aware um, insulin needs to be kept in the fridge when you're not using it and so if the power goes out the fridge stops working and so I was very scared that if the power went out for too long the fridge would so obviously when the like power goes out you're not supposed to open your fridge so that it stays cold or cool longer um, but if even if you keep the door closed like it's not gonna stay as cold as insulin needs it to 
Um, so I was very worried that my insulin would all denature and I wouldn't be able to use it and I'd have to pay a lot of money to get more insulin because insulin is expensive and you can only get it with your prescription and if it's not time to refill your prescription then tough luck most of the time unless your endocrinologist you know writes you a new prescription which like my endo would have done it was just scary and stressful then on top of that <laughs> Um, so I have, oh, I wear a CGM, like I've mentioned, and part of it is called the transmitter. The transmitter is a battery operated device that sends, I think it's via Bluetooth, um, the di like the blood sugar information that it collects from the CGM to the pump or to your receiver. If you just have a CGM and that's how it does that. And it takes battery life to do that, obviously. Um, so I got a notification from my pump saying, hey, your uh, transmitter battery is low. Next time, like, you need to change it soon. And it said you have, it said, like, 23 days left <laughs> on your battery life. And I was like, cool, all right, I have one CGM change coming up, and then I'll have another one because they last for 10 days, and then I'll be able to, like, I'm changing my CGM now, and then I'll have another 10 days after that to replace it and then, you know, it'll be fine. Apparently that wasn't the case because the what would have been like the second, so it was like, hey, you have 23 days left. Cool. I would have changed my CGM that day. That would have lasted 10 days. And then I changed my, I was going to change my CGM again on Friday, this past Friday, um, when I was going to film a different video about diabetic skincare. Um, that's coming soon, um, but I couldn't do it this week because I've been stressed. So we have this instead, but that's okay. Um, so I was changing it on Friday, which was like the start of the second 10 days. So I should have had at this point 13 days left to replace my transmitter, right? So I put, I attached the sensor on. And then I put the old transmitter in because I was like, I've got 13 days left. This should be fine. And I go to like start it up and it said, no, battery's dead, replace it. And I was like, okay. Um, so I didn't have another transmitter. So I had to go without my CGM for a like until I got the transmitter like like prescription renewed so of course then you know I'm kind of worried because as far as so every experience I've had with my pump so far has showed me that when it cannot get the information from the CGM it cuts down how like your basal rates of insulin so basal rate is the amount of insulin it gives you throughout the entire day just in the background um, not related to food at all so I was, so usually when it can't get a signal from your CGM, it cuts the rate of that in half so that you don't go too low. Um, because going high is dangerous, but going too low can cause you to pass out and like go into a coma or whatever. Um, so they would rather have you be too high than too low. Um, so they cut your rate in half. So I thought, oh, well, there's no CGM data. Does that mean it's going to cut the rate in half? Does that mean it's not going to work at all? Um, and my little anxious brain that has already dealt with everything else that I've had to deal with this past week was like, it's not going to work at all. Clearly, it's just not going to. So then, because this was about 4.30ish when I start doing this, um, I think, okay, I have some long active, like long lasting insulin. I have pen needles. I can give myself injections if I need to. Um, and of course, at this point, I am stress crying. And if you know me that well, you know I don't usually cry. That's just, I, I, I just don't. Um, <laughs> I'm not super emotional. And that's okay. It's just who I am. Um, like, I'm emotional, but I don't, like, show it outwardly. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, my pump is not working. It's not going to work at all. Um, I need to go back to finger sticks and giving myself injections. And I'm like, okay, cool. I can do that. I can manage that. But it's going to be really, really annoying because for me, whenever I do finger sticks, it hurts really bad. Um, and you can, I don't know if you can see it. I don't think you can. 
Yeah, because the focus is weird. But there's like a little dark spot on like the pad of my finger. You can kind of tell. Um, that's one of the finger pricks I did. There's others, but they're like harder to see because of the colors of my like fingertips and you know, like your skin isn't one consistent skin tone. So yeah, it it varies anyway. But the one that I showed you is like the darkest and most apparent one. But um, so I know you're supposed to do finger six on the sides of your fingers because that way it doesn't hurt. For me, blood doesn't flow if I do it there. So I have to do it on the pads of my fingers, which means it hurts. Um, that on top of the stress of thinking, okay, well, my dining hall doesn't really have a nutrition facts website that's available to students. For some reason, they took it down this term. I'm going to figure out what's up with that because it's not fair. Um, <laughs> And it's a little bit ableist if you think about it because there's people like me who need that information and I can't have it now. So, uh, dining hall, I'm coming for you a little bit. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to like guess what my carbon takes are gonna be if I eat from the dining hall because there's no nutritional facts website that's available. Two, I'm gonna have to do math again <laughs> to figure out how much insulin I need to take um, and I'll have to give myself injections, which is possible, but once you've been on the pump for so long, you're used to not having to do that. So I was scared, <laughs> very, very scared. I called my mom and I'm like sobbing to her because in order for myself to come up with that plan, I needed to talk it through. Um, keeping in mind, on top of all of this, there's the stress of knowing that I have a lot of homework to do. Um, granted, I realize now, several days later, that <laughs> I was trying to finish too much homework this weekend, and it wasn't like I didn't need to, like it wasn't all due on Monday. And besides that, I have like work stuff to do. So like, you know, this video, and also stuff with the housing and residence, like life department that I'm part of. Um, I have office duty literally tonight. Um, so like, you know, trying to like fit everything into like a super short amount of time. Plus I'm super anxious. Plus I think, okay, my pump isn't going to work. So I was sobbing on the phone to my mom trying to come up with a plan. I did. I got out of going to a meeting that I signed up to go to because I couldn't do that and get everything else done. There was literally no way. Um, I did that through an email. Then I uh, like went on my pharmacy app and try to get them to refill the transmitter um which it didn't say it was available for refill but i got it <laughs> so then i was i also tried to get them to refill sensors obviously because you need the sensors for the transmitter to work the sensors are the part that go into your body um, and i had to waste one because the transmitter failed so <laughs> i um try to get them to refill the sensors. I also need to call the company that like sell the, sells these things and gets them to me so that I can tell them, hey, your product like was weird. I needed a replacement one because they can send you, they'll, they'll send me one for free because it like was weird. Uh, <laughs> I'm babbling so much and I apologize, but this week was so anxious and this is going to help me like chill from it. So I'm doing it. Um, so then on top of that, so I did those two things. I tried to get them refilled. And then I start thinking, oh crap, <laughs> it's icy out. I might not be able to leave campus. So we didn't get enough snow and ice to cause power outage, but the roads were still like, I didn't know if the main road was like plowed or not. I knew the campus was okay. Um, if a little slick in some places. So I was like, okay, I don't know if that main road has been plowed because it's not, like I've gone on that road before in similar conditions and it, like, I don't know if it was plowed or plowed improperly or whatever, but there was ice on the road. Um, it was black ice and I like fishtailed a little bit. Not bad, this was several years ago, I'm fine. It just makes me nervous. <laughs> um, but, so I was worried that was gonna happen again when I went to go pick up my transmitter, which, you know, wouldn't have been good because I was already stressed. So I was very scared I wouldn't be able to get the transmitter until like today, basically. Today or yesterday. No, today. Today is Saturday, Sunday. Whew. Days don't exist in my head. Um, this all happened on Friday. 
and today is Sunday so very quick turnaround here <laughs> um so I did that and then I was like okay great I need to make sure like I need to know if my pump is gonna work or if I need to give myself injections and if I need to give myself injections I need to figure out how much insulin I need to take so I get off the phone with my mom I try to like get myself together because I am like crying so much that I'm like using tissues to like stop everything my nose is running because when you cry your nose runs um, and I was just kind of a mess because um, I was like okay I need to focus on this I can't get any of my homework done this is like horrible I feel bad because I can't do this work thing that I was gonna do tonight so yeah I was just super super anxious clearly so then I call my endocrinologist and at this point it's after 5 p.m. Um, <laughs> And it goes to like the on-call nurse or like the answering service that they have that will like listen to what's going on, forward you to the doctor if it's an, like not like a hospital emergency, but like a tech like something that they can help with through the phone. Um, so I tell the nurse, "Hi," like I I start saying, "Hi, this is the issue." Like I start like listing out the issue that I'm having, and then I start crying again. <laughs> So I say, I'm sorry, I'm just really anxious. That's why I'm crying. I'm fine. I'm just really anxious. And she was like, okay, cool. Well, like, it's okay. I'm like, yeah, but I'm still anxious. That's not going to help. Um, but like, you know, I get my point across of what's going on. And she calls the doctor to like tell him the information. And she says, before she disconnects from me, she says, if he doesn't call you back within half an hour, call me back. And I was like, cool, I will. Um, so then, like, I get a call, not even probably 10 minutes later, and in that 10 minutes, I'm, you know, trying to make myself stop crying again, and I'm trying to, like, like, breathe and, like, calm down a little bit. So then the doctor calls, and it's not a number I recognize. <laughs> like, it's not, like, the clinic's number. It's not even the right area code for my hometown area. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to pick up. So I, I pick up and I go, hello, and I start crying again. <laughs> um, because I was just so frustrated at this point that like everything was horrible and nothing was working and like I was just anxious beyond belief. So the doctor is like, hey, I'm so-and-so from this clinic, from your endocrinology office. I'm like, cool, hi. And he's like, I hear you're having some like CGM issues. And I'm like, yeah. So then I like, I say, first of all, I'm very anxious right now, and that is why I'm crying. I am perfectly fine. I'm just very anxious. So, because I hate when I'm on the phone with people and I start crying because I'm anxious <laughs> about whatever I'm talking about on the phone with them, and um, they start to like say, "Oh, calm down. You're okay. Like nothing's like nothing serious is going on," because it's just my brain making it that way, and like in my head. Like, I know that my brain is being mean to me. Like, I, I understand that. But you saying, everything's going to be fine, doesn't help me. That's not <laughs> what can help me. Um, for me, I just need to know that that whatever issue I'm having will be resolved. Um, and that's why I'm calling you, so that I can work on that issue getting resolved. So you saying, just, it's okay. It's taking more time than actually getting the issue resolved, thus making me a little bit more anxious that it's not getting resolved. Um, so I explained to him what's going on and what I think needs to happen. And he's like, no, your pump will still give you your basal amount. And when you finger prick, you can still type that in to give you your um, bolus insulin. And I'm like, immediately relieved at least for that part that my pump is still gonna work it's just gonna be a little weird <laughs> um, so I literally so after the phone call I like take some time to like calm down um, I go and I heat up some food I eat I r try really hard to calm down I finally get there and then I start doing homework or I start doing homework I didn't get any homework done on Friday <laughs> what I did do was reorganize the work that I had slated to do for this weekend so that I could, um, you know, still accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish. But instead of split over three days, it split over two days. So there's a lot more to get done throughout the day. Um, so then, of course, then I go to bed at 1 a.m. because I just can't sleep because I've been so anxious and my body has a lot of adrenaline coursing through it. 
um because it's I, I was so anxious like so anxious and I've said that phrase like 50 times this video but it's whatever because I was I was so nervous about so many different things and like on top of that the diabetes stuff didn't help <laughs> at all so eventually so Saturday morning when I woke up at like 10 ish 9 or 10 I don't know I slept in a bit because I was like this is too much I need sleep <laughs> um I woke up and I got to um like I went to the pharmacy to like get the transmitter and I you know put it on dealt with it it was fine <laughs> everything worked out um but it was still, I was still very stressed. And part of the reason I was still stressed is because I didn't understand why the transmitter didn't work. Because it still told me that I had 13, like, in, like, I swear it should have still had 13 days left of battery life. And it didn't have that. Um, there's also not a really good way to check the battery life on your pump. Like, you can't see how many days left. It'll just say battery, like, let me, let me see what it says right now because I have a new transmitter in now. Um, so you can't really easily see um, how much battery your transmitter has. I know on the CGM receiver, it just says like high, um, hot, like good battery or low battery, I think. Um, it's been a while since I just used this transmitter though so don't quote me on that um but it, like i know at some points it just says low like for battery life and i think there should be a way to like estimate how many days left because being in that situation where in my head i should have 13 days left to use my transmitter so i should get at least through another session before i need to replace it meaning you know i've got 10 days to call the pharmacy and say hey I need this prescription can I like get it ready and then for them to fill it I'd have t 10 days to like deal with the phone call deal with um it being like taking time to be filled because it's a prescription and those things aren't just like done you know here's your prescription you have to like sometimes you have to wait for orders to be shipped and things like that um and then I'd have time to go pick it up when my schedule allowed it I didn't have that time <laughs> um and so I feel like there should be a way to estimate based off of like the previous however many days to estimate how many days you have left on your battery. And I feel like that should be really simple to see both on the receiver and on the pump <laughs> because it's not like it's really, really nerve wracking to not know how much longer you have something when you know you need to refill it soon, but like if it quits on you early, it's not, like you can't really anticipate what you need and when to get your pres prescriptions refilled. Um, so I don't like that. That is really, really annoying and frustrating and I would really, really like it if there was a way to do that. Um, <laughs> so if you know Dexcom or feel like you can send, uh, I'm looking again for tr like the transmitter information. I just don't think I know where it is. And I'd have to look into the user manual for my pump to like find it. And that's not good um, when someone who uses this device every day can't check, you know, battery life for another device that I rely on for peace of mind. Um, if that's the case, like if I can't check that easily, that's very very nerve-wracking um so if you want to please send this video to dexcom um and tell like because i should have had to my knowledge 13 days left on the transmitter battery and i realize 13 days just barely covers the uh the session that i would have had because it lasts for 10 days however i feel like i should, still should have had those 13 days or at the very least a better way to manage the time that I use a particular transmitter like be able to manage its battery life better um, be able to check it more easily 
um, that kind of stuff. That should be very, very easy to do. It should be. I don't know if it is. I don't know code. I don't know programming. I don't know any of that. But it should be something accessible to diabetics. Um, because it's that's important. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to learn more about diabetes from a patient perspective or watch my next video um, about diabetic skincare, please subscribe below. As always, I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Stay healthy. Bye. <laughs>